The longest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 119. It has been called the Psalm of the Scriptures because it concentrates on one thing, the amazing sufficiency of God's Word for our lives. Open to Psalm 119 today and open your heart to the Lord as we join Scott Pauley in this study. It is our prayer that through God's truth, you will find all you need. I honestly believe we could take a month on any section of Psalm 119 and just live in it. And perhaps you want to do that. Oh, it's doing my soul so much good. Uh, We have been in Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112 in our last couple of studies. And I'd like to return there one final time before we move on. I just, I want to bring to your attention something at the end of this section that I think will help all of us uh, to the end of our life. Here's the last verse of Psalm 119, uh, verses 105 to 112. The psalmist says, I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always. And then he adds this expression, even unto the end. You know, life has an end. Uh, For the believer, it ends in the presence of God forever. Uh, Our end is really not an ending. It is another new beginning because the God of the Bible is forever the God of new beginnings. Uh, But the psalmist here references the end of his life, the end of his opportunity. I've been pondering this because there are so many people who begin well. They really do. They, They have a great start. People will remember how you start and how you finish. And the sad reality is that so many people who start well do not finish well. Would you pray for me? Would you pray that somehow by God's grace I can finish well, that I can stay true to the Lord literally in the words of Scripture unto the end? So many times well-intentioned people fail to continue in the path God has put them on. And God's intention God's intention is to bless his people, every life, even to the end. Let me give you a couple illustrations of what I'm talking about. Do you remember the last sight that the disciples had of the Lord Jesus Christ when he left them? On the day of the ascension, he leads them outside of Jerusalem to a mountain, and he ascends up into the clouds. Read it carefully for yourself in Luke chapter number 24. You'll see that his hands are raised in blessing Think of this, the last picture those first disciples had of their master, his hands were raised blessing them, like the high priest would raise his hands in blessing, our great high priest. I believe those hands are still raised in blessing. But the idea is he was blessing them to the end. When you come to the last book of the Bible, the revelation of Jesus Christ, read Revelation chapter 1, verse number 3. Read Revelation chapter number 22. What do you find? God's blessing, Uh, no more curse. You see, God's intention is that his blessing would continue. Nay, it would increase. In other words, in the words of Proverbs, the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. God wants you to have his blessing on your life all the way to the very end. And, of course, that blessing is connected to Scripture and what we do with God's word. Uh, So, If that's the way the section ends, let's back up for just a moment and walk through it one final time and notice what it is God wants us to have unto the end. In verse 105 and 106, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgment. So first of all, God wants us to have light unto the end, all the way to the end of our days, not walking in darkness, walking in his light. Notice he says the word is a lamp and a light. What's the difference? Well, look at it carefully. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. That's where I am right now. And it's a light unto my path. That's where I'm going. The scripture will shed light both on where you are at this moment and where you're supposed to be, where you're standing and what the next step is. So if you're dealing with something in the present, or you're working towards something in the future, know this, the Word of God is what is going to shed light on that path. And then when you come to verse 107 through 109, we read this, I'm afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according 
to thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. He wants you not only to have light unto the end, he wants you to have life to the end, his life, life more abundant. That's what Jesus said he came to give. And notice here there's a picture of death. He said, my soul is continually in my hand. Uh, that phrasing we, we may not identify with readily, but let me say it in a way that everybody will understand. Have you ever heard somebody say he's taking his life in his own hands? In other words, he's living in peril. Uh, he's living on the edge. That's where the psalmist was. He said, I'm in danger, and yet he makes this prayer. He said, Lord, quicken me. Breathe your breath. Breathe your life into me. Death may be at hand, but life is in my heart. The resurrection power of God. And notice in these verses what he gives and what we give. He gives life, and we give him praise. I hope today you'll stop and just give him praise, that the word is what you need. And that his life-giving power is available to you no matter what peril is around you at this moment. All the way to the end. Light to the end. Life to the end. And then, praise God, liberty to the end. Listen to verse 110. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Jesus said in John chapter 8, Ye shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. The Lord makes you free. He said in that same passage, If the Son thereof shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Do you see how God's truth sets you free? It brings liberty. You're not all bound up. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Unto the end, friends, walk in the liberty that you find in God's word. And then to the end we have his leading. Here's how this section ends. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes all the way, even unto the end. To the very end, God's word is our guide, helping us to finish well. Let me testify for just a moment. I don't want to just finish. I want to finish well. I want to finish faithfully and gracefully. I want to finish with the joy of the Lord I've taken for my life verse, maybe I should say my second half verse, Acts 20, verse 24, where the apostle Paul said, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. He didn't just want to finish his ministry, that's his work. He wanted to finish his course, that's his walk. If you want to finish your work well, finish your walk well. And if you want to finish well, ask the Lord to help you not only to finish on the right side, ask him to help you finish on the bright side, to finish your course with joy. That's the emphasis of this section. That's the emphasis of all of Scripture. God wants us to obey him to the end, to believe him to the end, to enjoy him to the end. And yes, he wants to bless us to the end. And here's the beautiful truth for the child of God. When you get to the end, you cross the great threshold out of time and into eternity, out of this world and into the presence of God, guess what you find? More of the same, much more of it, more than you could have ever imagined here in this life. Uh, more of his joy and presence, more of his blessing. Oh, dear friend, God has so much for every one of us. My prayer for you today is that you will keep his statutes all the way, even unto the end. And to the end of your days, you'll experience all that God has for you. Don't die before you die. And don't quit before God is finished. The Lord is not through with you, dear friend. Unto the end, through his word, he will give you all you need. All you need is found in the Word of God. As you learn it and apply it, you will come to know the God of the Word more and more. Our prayer today is that you will grow in your understanding of Scripture and your love for the one who gave it. You may find additional resources for Bible study at our online home. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org today. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your prayers, support, and thanks for sharing the Enjoying the Journey studies with others.